will soon be up on Moose Mountain in Hanover. Uh, right now we have a, a rack full of equipment up there that's, uh, that's been in use for quite a while. Um, it sort of grew over the years and, uh, and uh, some of it's outdated, some of it uh, requires a lot of maintenance. It's hard to maintain because it's, uh, everything's really packed in up there. So we've, we've got a little bit taller rack um, and we've gotten a rack that makes it uh, gives us the ability to uh, pack more equipment in in the one space. This is our smallest uh, transmitter site footprint. So this is one rack of equipment for a whole radio transmitter site with a backup transmitter and the whole thing. Um, so we have uh, in here three different ways to get the signal from NHPR. We have a satellite receiver, uh, a microwave receiver that Sends the, you know, we send a signal over top of a couple mountain tops to get out to Hanover from here. And then we have an FM off-air receiver that receives the Weibo, Weibo signal. Uh, and that's the third way we can get our signal to this site. So all three of those different ways we get the signal to the site, we process it, and uh, switch you know, whichever one we need on the air, uh, and put it into either the main or backup transmitter. The backup transmitter that will be in this rack is still up in Hanover as backup service is sitting uh, ready to be used up there. Um, and then some of the other infrastructure, there's a big open hole here where the audio processor uh, will live. And we've got a box in there to simulate sort of where the connections are on the processor itself so we can cut the correct length cables and, and do that kind of stuff. Um, each of our transmitter sites has a, uh, has a remote control and some monitoring equipment. Um, so there's a, uh, a broadcast-specific uh, remote control that keeps track of all the operating parameters of the transmitters and all the different, you know, the signal levels on the different pieces of gear. Uh, allows us to uh, make commands at the site, basically button pushes without being there. We can, we can connect to it over the uh, internet or by phone line and uh, put the backup transmitter on the air, switch to a backup studio transmitter link, reset a fault, those kind of things. It also feeds us information if there's a power outage, uh, the status and health of the generator, and, uh, and various things, the temperatures, you know, so we can monitor and see if anything's getting too hot or anything like that. So, um, but it's uh, it's built as a very compact um, package to, to go in the space that's allotted to us. Normally, if we build out something like this, it would at least be two racks worth of equipment. And some of our installations now are three because of just the, the, uh, the need to have a little bit more space for the transmitters, the higher power transmitters, and uh, room for a little bit more future expansion. It makes it a little more workable. If you, in a second, we'll look around the back here, and you'll see that there's uh, pieces of equipment staggered sort of in the middle of the rack, facing sort of forward but halfway back, and some things are facing backwards. And RJ's done a great job at getting everything to fit in that we need to. There's even some things hanging on the back door. He's made up a, a panel back there to hang some of the equipment on the back door so we can uh, maximize the amount of space in that footprint that we can use up there. Um, 